Hi everyone, and welcome to another Getting Started with Canvas screencast. This time I'm going to review Canvas's calendar. The calendar in Canvas is a global feature, which means that it's independent of any one course. Because it's global, the calendar shows you dated events and assignments in all of your courses, as well as your personal calendar. You can filter your view to control which calendars you see at any one time. You can get to your calendar from the global menu, from your personal to-do list on your dashboard, or from the to-do list in your courses. If you want to view your Canvas calendar in Outlook or Google, then you can use the calendar feed to add your Canvas calendar events into any calendar app that accepts iCal feeds. The views available in Canvas Calendar include a weekly view, a monthly view, a view of your daily calendar agendas, and a mini monthly calendar view that you can control separately from other views in the main calendar window. By default, in all views, your calendar will open to the current month and the current day will be highlighted. You'll be able to see calendar entries for up to 10 courses at a time. The course calendars you see are listed in the right sidebar and the courses that have a colored box next to them are the courses that are currently visible. If you want to filter your calendar views, then toggle the colored box to deactivate that calendar. When the calendar is not active, the box next to the course name will be grayed out. Speaking of colors, if you want to change the calendar color associated with the course, you can do so by clicking on the three dots to the right of each course name. Another calendar feature is the scheduler. The scheduler creates a kind of event, usually a meeting, that you host with your students. You can use this tool to create sign-up sheets for these meetings. Now, I want to demonstrate how easy it is to add events and assignments to the calendar. First, I want to be sure that I'm viewing the correct calendar for this course. Remember, the calendar shows all of my courses and my personal calendar. So, I want to be sure I'm adding an event or an assignment to the correct course. One best practice for doing this is to deactivate all of my calendars except for the course calendar I'm currently working on. It's important to note that you can't add events or activities to more than one course calendar at a time, and if you accidentally add an event or an activity to the wrong calendar, you can't pick that entry up and easily move it to the correct calendar. If I add an entry to the wrong calendar, then I have to delete that entry and redo it in the intended calendar. Okay, now that I know I'm working on the calendar for the course I'm building, I'll start by adding an event. I'll go to the beginning of the term and to the first day of class. When I click on the first day of class, I get a pop-up box that gives me a choice to add an event or an assignment. I want to make the first day of class an event. I'll add that my class begins at 11 a.m. and goes until noon. And then I'll also add a location. My class meets in the Clark Building, C143. And I'll double check that I'm adding all of this to the correct calendar. Now. I see that I can add other information here, but in this case, I've added all of the information I need. Okay, now I'll add a couple of assignments. During week one, I'll have an in-class writing assignment due. It'll be due on Wednesday. I'm careful here to select assignment rather than event. and I've already selected the due date. I'm confident that I'm in the right calendar, but I'll double check that. 
For now, this assignment will go into the default assignments group and see here that I can add more options, the details of the assignment. But because I'm adding several assignments as placeholders, I'm done for now. Moving on, I'll add a homework assignment that'll be due on Monday of the second week of class. And finally, I'll add a draft of essay number one that'll be due on Friday of week two. I want you to see how easy it is to move these calendar entries around. Let's say that I realized I'm moving a little fast with essay number one, and I want to add some additional reading activities to the second week. So I'll move the homework assignment to Wednesday. And I also want to move the first draft of essay number one to the first Wednesday of week three. But here's a problem. How do I move entries between months without having to start over? The answer is to use the mini calendar. I can pick up this assignment and drag it to a day in the following month on the mini calendar. Another way to move entries is to change the dates in the assignments. Remember that the calendar is linked to the assignments, so changing dates in one place automatically changes the dates in the other. Now let's take a look at how you can use the scheduler tool in the calendar to create appointments that prompt students to sign up for meetings. Scheduler allows you to schedule one-on-one -on -one or group meetings. Let's take a look. From the calendar, open the scheduler. You'll see some instructions here that will guide you to create an appointment group. This group of appointments should encompass the range of meetings that you want to have with your students. You may need to make several groups, but each group should cover a general topic and a range of times within which you can schedule a group of meetings. For demonstration, I'll imagine that I want to do midterm conferences with each student in my class of 20. In addition, I want to have four group meetings with four final project groups. I'll start by creating and naming the first appointment group, Midterm Conferences, and I've decided to do all of these one-on-one -on -one meetings in two days. I want to do 10 15-minute meetings in 20-minute blocks from 11 a.m. to 2.20 p.m. on two days in early October. Note that I can change the ending times of each meeting so that it's 15 minutes long, which gives me a 5-minute cushion between meetings. I'll double-check that I've selected the correct calendar. I can limit each time slot to one person and allow each person to sign up for only one appointment. I can also include details about the midterm conference so that students will come prepared. Then I'll save and publish this group of meetings. Now I'm going to set up the four group assignments. I'll go back to Scheduler and create and name the second appointment group. I'll name this group of meetings Final Project Groups and set up four 30-minute meetings. In this case, I'll also limit each time slot to one person and allow each person to sign up for only one appointment. Because this is a group meeting, I can also select Have Students Sign Up in Groups. This means that if one person in the group signs up for the group, all members of that group will be signed up and they'll all get notifications. If you use the scheduler, you'll have to let students know about it. You'll have to direct them to the scheduler in their calendars so that they sign up for the meetings with you. 
Once they sign up, both you and the students, individuals and group members, will get calendar notifications about their upcoming meetings. I also want to show you how you can use the calendar in tandem with Canvas's conference tool. Canvas's conference tool is called Big Blue Button, and it allows you to create live online meetings. I won't go into detail about how to use the conference tool in this screencast, but I do want to show you how to schedule a live conference using the course calendar. I'll go into my course and then to conferences so that you can see that I've taken the first step and set up a shell for a live conference. Take note that when using the Conferences tool, the person who creates the conference must start the conference. And since that's me in this case, to begin this conference, I'll come here early, maybe 10 minutes, and I'll start the conference. In planning, when I first set up the conference, I want to create a calendar event so that everyone in class is notified about the conference and so that they can get the information they need to attend the conference. First, when I create the conference, I'll copy the URL of this conference page. This is the location students need to come when it's time so that they can join the conference. Now that I have the URL, I'll go back to Calendar and I'll select the date of the conference. In the Event Name field, I'll type in Live Online Conference. From 11 a.m. to noon, and I'll make sure I'm posting this to the correct calendar. Now, because I want to include a link to the conference, I'll click on More Options. And using the Rich Content Editor, I'll type Join This Meeting. And then I'll link this text to the URL location of the meeting that I copied when I was on the conference page. Finally, I'll create the event. And now, when students are notified about this event, they'll get the link to the meeting as well. And when it's time, the link will take them directly where they need to be to join the conference. For more information about Canvas's calendar tool, take a look at this set of calendar guides, including guides to the scheduler, in Canvas's Help Center. You can also get more information about conferences from this set of guides in Canvas's Help Center.